Okay, there's a couple things I didn't mention uh, prior to digging this hole that I had out here, and um, I really highly, highly suggest, especially for somebody that's not uh, been doing a lot of digging for uh, ever, actually, uh, you want to make sure that you get yourself some, uh, some work gloves. It'll uh, help prevent the blisters because that hole uh, at four feet deep is a pretty good hole to dig. It took me about uh, 40 minutes, give or take a few minutes. And the other thing is, besides working gloves that you want to have out, is something to drink. Um, I happen to have dug this hole today. It's 92 degrees. <clears throat> so make sure that you drink plenty of liquids uh, to keep yourself hydrated because digging this hole, even, only, even in only 40 minutes, uh, can, can lead to some uh, serious health problems. Okay, now what you're going to want to do is mix your concrete in a wheelbarrow. Uh, you're going to want to be prepared, and what I have to make quick mixing and making it easier is I have a one gallon bucket and I've got a five gallon bucket. And what I do with the uh, one gallon bucket is I keep the five gallon bucket full. Uh, it could be somebody that helps me, or I have the hose on a, a slow trickle and let it continually fill. And then when I'm ready to mix the concrete, I'll pull one gallon up mix it in. I've got a perfect mixture. I can go ahead and rake it in and uh, mix it and get ready to pour it. That way you get yourself a system going. You don't have to worry about spraying a little bit of concrete, not have enough, and then spray more and then end up with more, con more water than you need in your concrete. If you use a bucket where you've got a predetermined amount that you're going to be putting in there each time, the, uh, <clears throat> the concrete is going to be a perfect mix. You'll be able to pull it all the way up through and have an awesome foundation. Okay, I've laid my concrete bag in there. I'm using the 80 pound bag. Um, I take my spade. The way I like to open the bags, the easiest way to do it is take my spade shovel and kind of hit the end, right on the end of the bag to kind of push it open. And then I'll take the shovel and run right down through the middle of it, just like so. That way the bag's completely open. And then all you have to do is lift it up, flip it over, and it just pours out really easy, just like that. Then, ready to mix, I just go ahead and grab my predetermined amount of water, which is about a gallon for the 80, for the 80 pounds. Run the water in there. Now, one of the things that I like to do, um, different than many instructions call for, is they may say, use your shovel, shovel or <clears throat> a hoe. I actually have this small uh, garden rake. I use it to mix because what you're doing with the garden rake is it will pull the water through the gravel or the uh, concrete much easier than a hoe will. I mean, you can do it with it. You can do it with a shovel. You can do it with whatever you want. I happen to like the the rake, and I'll show you another thing that I do with the rake once we uh, get into into the pour here. So, just go ahead and mix up the concrete by pushing it back and forth with your fingers on, on the rake. You want to make sure that when you mix, you're pulling the, the concrete to you on the big side of the tub, on your wheelbarrow, because uh, you're less likely to get uh, splashed that way. If you're on that side and you mix, um, you're, you're more likely to get, uh, get splashed on. So you can flip the rake over so, the, so that your uh, fingers are pointing up and push the concrete back over into the water again. The water will start oozing back towards the front. You gotta be careful because it may want to flip on you a little bit. And then go ahead and pull it back again. And then you want to repeat that until the concrete has a, is mixed up for you. Again, flipping it over, pulling it this way, and then pushing it back.
before we enter the uh, insert the ground anchor and I'll show you what I've been doing each time that I drop a load in here I get as much of it out as I can by dumping <clears throat> then I'll take the trowel that I'm going to use to finish the concrete base on top once we've got it all complete and the ground anchor is in place so use this uh, use your trowel to kind of clean it out clean the wheelbarrow out each time make sure you get it all out of there and then what I do just because of the consistency is between each mix and to make sure that the concrete is evenly mixed all the way up through I'll take my rake and I'll push it plunge it down all the way into the last batch over top of the new batch and pull it up and down up and down and what's that what that's doing <clears throat> is it's agitating the previous bag into our new bag which is going to give it a nice even um, uh, a nice even uh, concrete a nice even, even base all the way up so now we've got three quarters of the uh, concrete in we can start uh, we can insert our uh, ground acre <clears throat> now one thing that's very very important it's marked on here is you make sure that the uh, the arrow is facing towards your play playing area if the arrow is not on it for some reason uh, it should be on it but if it's not for some reason you want to make sure that this pivoting pin used to raise the goal the actual system is also facing towards the uh, towards the playing area so now what we want to do is insert this right in the center <coughs> see now the bottom concrete even with these yellow bags has already started to set up a little bit so you'll need to <coughs> take and run it up and down a few times until you get it right about where it needs to be now you want to take a little bullet level like this one put it on the uh, ground acre move it so that the so that the top is level you want to make sure that it's level in this direction and this direction. You want that bubble to be right directly in the middle of the two lines on your level, on your bubble level. So if you check it both ways and you're there, you've got yourself a perfect, uh, perfect installation. Now what you see here is we have the base uh, build up. We're probably about an inch, inch and a half below the surface so that we have plenty of room for the, uh, for the unit to be able to pivot up. We've got to be able to install the, install the unit here. So it, it looks kind of rough here as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick. What you want to do is let this concrete set up for about five minutes or so before you come back and try and get uh, all those ugly marks out, the cracks the pits and uh, make it blend in and make it and give it a real nice finish so what you're going to want to do is just take some water now with the with this water on top of the concrete all you need to do you look at that look at that look how that all just blends blends in real nice nice and smooth there now, that'll put a real nice finish you can get a nice cap and finish a nice finished cap on the top of your concrete. If you need to add add a little bit more water. That's all you got to do. Try not to add too much water though. All you want to do is put enough on on the top there to to bring this around and, and put a real nice nice smooth finish on it. And then just keep working it. Keep working it. Just like you're buttering the top of the cake. That's 
pretty much all there is to it. Okay, set your trowel aside, take a dry rag, and wipe off the ground anchor. Get as much of that concrete off of it as you possibly can. Because this piece here is the most important when you go to stand up your you stand your system up. If this plate right here on the top of this ground anchor is perfectly level, then I can guarantee that your system is going to be perfectly level too. Let this set for about 40 hour, 48 hours and you're ready to go.